So would the Kings actually trade Bogdan Bogdanovich? It is the Sacramento Kings, so perhaps we can leave anything open. But for all the times that I've mentioned a potential Bogdan trade, I should probably make a video from the perspective of the Kings and why they should keep him. The obvious reason is he's good, and I feel like he can be a pretty good scorer, and I, sometimes I think he could actually average over 20 a game if he was on a different team and he was starting and all that stuff. Now, for whatever it's worth, I looked at Bogdan's lineup numbers with Buddy Heald and De'Aaron Fox. This year they're terrible, last year they were a negative. I'm choosing to not care about that. I think those three can play together, but the numbers would suggest could be pretty tough. And I guess the reason for that is all three guys want the ball. And if one of them is going to lose that, it's going to be bogged on. So maybe, maybe they should actually trade the guy. I don't know. But I think when, when you start thinking about should the Kings trade him, there's other things you got to look at. For example, the Kings salary situation for the next couple of years. So if we look at next season, Basketball reference tells me the Kings are going to be at 116. But Trevor Ariza has a non-guaranteed contract that I think goes down to like $1 million from his 12.8 that it is right now. So assuming they would decline that, that would knock them down to about $104 million, But they also have their pick, which is probably going to be in the lottery. So then you're going to add, I don't know, Six million could be more or less depending on how that shakes up. So then you're back to around 110, which is still about six million dollars saved. And the luxury tax is going to be like 140 and up moving forward. So I think re signing Bogdan probably would still keep you under the luxury tax, but it would kind of lock this team into place. And that's even with Corey Joseph's non guaranteed in 2022 and B. Elites has also got a non-guaranteed, but I think they should pick that one up. So, there is a chance they could still squeak by underneath the luxury tax, potentially. I mean, you are still going to have to pay Deer and Fox and Bagley soon, but you've got other guys coming off the books. Getting off of Deadman's money would be huge. That was part of the reason why I didn't make a big deal about that move, is because I honestly didn't like it that much, because I just was like, these guys already have a log jam up front, and then, then they signed Dwayne Deadman. So anyway... Yes, there are ways to where this team will not become insanely expensive even if you do sign Bogdanovich to some sort of a contract. But, again, it does kind of say this is our team. And are we sure this team is good? Well, unfortunately, there have been injuries this year. And I think this was the season where we were really going to find out what this team had. And it's just Fox and Bagley have missed so many games we don't really know. That does make it all a little more difficult to determine should we commit to Bogdan and basically commit to what we have or should we shake things up and he's probably our one avenue of doing that. That or if they just didn't want Marvin Bagley or something, which I don't think would happen. And I guess if you want to combine all that with the fact that, again, the minutes with Bogdan, Heald, and Fox have not been positives, okay, I guess that's your case for trading him, but... Again, I do still like him, and I think he can work on this team. Now, when it comes to free agency, of course, everything else around that one player matters. I mean, we look at the other shooting guards. There's DeMar DeRozan, who could be viewed by some team that might have cap space now or can get cap space as the thing that can take them to the next level over someone like a Bogdan. Then there's Bogdan, Evan Fournier, Tim Hardaway Jr. Well, he's got a player option. Joe Harris, Malik Beasley, even though Gallo is not a two-guard, I think he kind of still fits into a team wanting a shooter, so they could give their cap space to him rather than someone like a Bogdan, and you know, there's other dudes here and there. So, is Bogdan going to get an insane amount of money this offseason? Well, I think there's arguments to be had about where he fits among that whole list of free agents. You might have him at the top, the bottom, somewhere in the middle, wherever. I would have him closer to the top, but can I confidently say he's better than Evan Fournier or DeMar DeRozan? Uh, he's certainly more exciting than both of them, but no, I don't know for a fact if he's better. 
And in the case of Fournier, I could see the Magic re-signing him for maybe a little more than you might think, because I think he is pretty essential to their offense. But then we start looking at teams with cap space, and who could give Bogdan an offer that the Kings just may not be ready to match. I mean, you've got Atlanta, who um, are going to have an insane amount of cap space, but there's a chance they're going to fill some of that up with a move at the deadline. We've, of course, heard the Andre Drummond rumors. If that move happens, and I'll talk about it. But if Atlanta did want just another actual offensive piece who could do something off the dribble, could they offer Bogdan 20-something million a year? Yeah, potentially. I don't know if they really would, but it's an idea. For the Grizzlies, I mean, a Ja Morant and Bogdan backcourt could be something kind of cool. That's two guys who can go off the dribble and also make shots, play off the ball. Cleveland has already got themselves a bit of a backcourt thing, so I don't know if they want to put Bogdan in that as well. Charlotte, kind of similar between Devonte and Rozier. Those two have been starting together lately. The Pelicans have space, but they're going to give Ingram a max, so that's going to eat up most of their cap. And then you start getting into teams that are close to, like, 100 million. I mean, the Knicks have a million non-guaranteed contracts, so they could get in on this as well. And I could picture them. So, you know, there's a couple teams who I could picture talking themselves into giving Bogdan a $25 million a year offer or something. And you know what? Maybe it is fair for the Kings to be like, you know what? Maybe we don't need to commit to that. Now, we could argue whether that's a smart move or not, but I could picture them being a little scared of that. But at the same time, I don't think it's a 100% certainty either because there is a lot of competition at that two-guard spot and there are like a solid amount of pretty good free agents this offseason. You know, there's not a lot of stars, but there's a lot of decent players. So, I don't know. I guess it depends on where you fall on all that. I think the biggest thing, though, moving past all of that stuff, where I think there are cases to trade him and to keep him, are... What could you actually get for the guy? And I think the idea would be a guy on a longer contract who's making, I don't know, $10 million or something. Just a dude who you can guarantee is not going to make your cap situation more difficult. Or you're trading it for like a draft pick, essentially. And you're just basically like, let's just restart this asset and go from there. And, you know, if you want to go with the draft pick route, then I can bring up Milwaukee again, because I talked about them trading for Bogdan with the Pacers pick from, you know, the trade video Eastern Conference thing I did like a week ago. Uh, But even so, in that type of a move, the Kings wouldn't be getting back like a real player. Like it's Ilyasova's money. I mean, DiVincenzo, you could view him as a real player, but that could hold them up. There have been the Kuzma rumors. I mean, I wouldn't do that if I was them because you want to talk about front court logjam. Now you're going to throw Kyle Kuzma into that mix. But also, uh, Bogdan's just simply a better player. And the Lakers don't have much to offer besides a second round pick that's not going to be anything. Now, if the defending NBA champion Toronto Raptors would like to trade for Bogdan right now. That could be interesting because they've got all of their picks moving forward. And they've also got Powell, whose contract I think would be nice for the Kings. But I don't think you would get both. I don't think you're getting Norman Powell and a protected first for Bogdan. But, you know, just that kind of thing for the Kings, you know? I think that's the type of thing they should be looking for if they are looking to move Bogdan. If I was Sacramento... Again, I, I look, I don't, I don't have any insiders who can imply to me who's going to sign who in the offseason and all that stuff, but I think I would ride it out. I think I would. I think I would be like, you know what? I'm confident enough that I can keep bogged on and I'm not going to have to pay him like $30 million a season. Is there a chance that blows up in your face? Yeah, but literally anything that you do in the NBA or in life <laughs> could blow up in your face, so... Sometimes you just got to make a decision and commit to it. So we'll see what they do. The biggest thing is if they do decide to trade him, can it please just be like an actual good return? Like don't just be some BS. 
or like another front court guy that is not going to be able to play because they have a million front court guys. Anyway, that's it. Bogdan's good. <laughs>